The Argos went on the road to Rome and picked up a comfortable road win. Now primed with the toughest part of the schedule ahead, Pete Chinnick is here to tell us what to expect. It was a busy weekend for everybody in Argo Athletics. We'll follow up with volleyball's packet pink match and see how cross country fared at their conference meet. Swimming and diving were also in action at home. Antoine Griffin stops by to join us this week and we meet All-American goalkeeper Caitlin Burkhardt. That's all this week on the Coach Chinnick Show on the UWF Sports Network. Welcome into week nine of the Coach Shinnick Show with head coach Pete Shinnick. I'm Tommy Thraw. Great to be with you today, Coach. You go up to Shorter, Rome, Georgia, get a nice win. Yeah, very excited to come back with the victory. Uh, we made it a little more interesting than I would have liked, but uh, really pleased with our guys just continuing to get better and improve each week. The offense really looked like it was in a great rhythm there all night. Yeah, Mike did a great job of really taking what the defense gives us. Uh, that's one of the keys to the quarterback play here at UWF. I mean, we really try to read the defense, really try to, you know, see what they're giving us and then take advantage of it. And really, for the most part, you know, you complete over 70 percent of your balls. Uh, I mean, he was he was reading the right things and seeing the right things most of the day. Pretty much exactly what you needed after a tough week the week before against Delta. Got some guys' confidence back up again. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think, you know, from an offensive standpoint, uh, excited about how we executed and what we did. Uh, didn't run the ball as well as I think we're capable of, but that was really more by Shorter's design. Uh, they were packing the box, putting a lot of guys in there, uh, and we just decided if they're going to do that, then we'll throw the ball, and that worked out pretty well for us. Taking a look at how things went, well, it was a fun day. Offensively, it was the defense, actually, that put up points first. Marvin Conley with a nice pick six. Yeah, great job by Marvin. I mean, just fantastic being in the right place at the right time. You know, we had just gone three and out as an offense, and uh, what a great way to pick up the team and just get everybody fired up and put us up 7 nothing. Really taking advantage of kind of a miscue. It was a pretty well-thrown ball. And mm -hmm. then Mike Beaudry really got in sync with his receivers. Antoine had a huge day. Antoine played as best, uh, his best game of the season, which is very exciting to see. Uh, we drive the ball down, and uh, Austin Blake Smith gets his first touchdown here at UWF. Um, tried to change up some things in the red zone, do things a little differently, and it really paid off for us as we were able to finish drives. Great pressure really all day by our D-line. Uh, excited to see Dre and John Williamson uh, getting in there and uh, getting a sack. Able to get some pressure, and when you guys wanted to, you guys were really able to shut down the run. Yeah, I, don't, I think they had 55 yards, 56 yards on the day rushing. Uh, great job just closing the gap, squeezing the offensive line, putting them in a bad situation. Uh, great deep ball here by Mike. Uh, Kevin Grant just going up and getting that thing. Great to see him just, you know, strong arm that and go up and grab it. And then Mike, you know, called another play similar to the one we scored on. Uh, they caved in the, the left side with uh, the offensive line there, and he just kept running and found his way into the end zone. Mike ended up running the ball 14 times in that game. Was that by design? Not really. I, I, I don't think we called one quarterback run uh, for him. Uh, he did boot one time and keep it, and he did pull one time uh, on an inside run, but uh, most of those were just scrambles. This Saw Mike Charles make a sack right there, uh, and then another deep ball by Mike to uh, Antoine Griffin. That was a perfectly thrown ball, and we talked earlier, great day for Antoine. He'll be on the show a little bit later, and then and <laughs> he was able to get it done with his legs after the catch, too. Yeah, and here's A.J. Seward. Excited to get him. He's been, you know, A.J.'s been playing for us a lot, doing a lot of different things, and to get him a touchdown, that, that was awesome to see. And then Griffin, again, Kind of helping Mike out a little bit on a play like that. Yeah, we um, we thought we'd have that play earlier to Antoine, actually, and uh, Mike got a little pressure and had to move up in the pocket, and then they did a great job finding each other on the scramble drill. Well, just an excellent job. Reggie Barnes there making the tackle, and then once again, Griffin, why not? Nice move, end zone. Yeah, he really, I mean, he scored on a touchdown that got called back, and then we tried him deep and missed him. We really went to him three times in a row, and then a little energy and excitement in the locker room here. Our guys singing uh, the UWF football fight song. So, fun stuff. Good stuff. Well, it was a lot of fun. It was, it was a fun game offensively. Uh, and, and when you look at Mike, not only did he get it done with his legs, but through the air, it seemed like 
you know, as good of a day as he did, his receivers had a much better day. Well, they did. You saw guys that were dialed in. You saw Kevin Grant make a play that's been an incompletion later or earlier on in the season. Uh, you saw Caleb Robinson come up with some big catches. Uh, we didn't mention him. And then Antoine, I mean, which is very exciting for us because uh, we need him to play at a high level. We need him to have the energy and the life that he had on Saturday uh, for us to compete here the rest of the season. You had 11 different guys make catches in that game. Yeah, and that's just part of the offense. Uh, we really don't uh, feature somebody. We really don't say, hey, you got to throw here. Uh, we really do a lot of reads. We do a lot of progression uh, in you know, what the defense gives us. And uh, Mike did a great job of just spreading the ball around and getting different guys involved. The defense didn't allow you to run the ball much in that game, but Leroy Wilson, we saw a lot of him. Yeah, Leroy, uh, Chris Shores was uh, working on a, an injury which we've gotten him back 100% and uh, felt like this would be a good opportunity to get Leroy uh, some looks. He'd had a really good game against Delta, wanted to get him started, uh, and excited about what he's been able to do. So uh, we really feel like going into uh, this week, I mean, with Leroy and Anthony and Chris, uh, we've got three guys that are playing at a high level at the running back spot. Well, let's talk about the defense. You know, you look at the yardage that they allowed, and it really only came on a handful of plays. It, you have a couple of guys get burnt in different situations. If not for that, the score looks a lot different. Well, it does, and I think, you know, the difference between offense and defensive football, obviously, when the defense makes a mistake, it's typically uh, seven points. You, you know, last week against Delta, we missed a couple of deep shots that would have resulted in 14 points. Uh, this week, we missed a couple of coverages, and we missed a couple of uh, opportunities to tackle in the open field. And all of a sudden, you do that, and three plays now account for 150 yards and uh, 21 points. And, you know, that obviously changes the scope of the game, uh, how it's played out, what needs to take place. Um, but I, I'd say, you know, 90% of the time our defense was on and the mistakes that we made are correctable. All right. Well, good stuff. We've certainly got more to talk about. It was a busy weekend for Argo Athletics. We'll recap it all and chat with Antoine Griffin next. This is the Coach Shinnick Show on the UWF Sports Network. We will never settle for the kiddie pool. We are destined for the vast ocean of opportunities that await us. We were born to make a splash. At the University of West Florida, you can make a discovery, make a difference, make a splash. So take a deep breath and dive in. The University of West Florida. How will you make a splash? We can stop to make sure someone is okay. Get in the way and disrupt the situation. Codify an authority. Or walk them home safely. We can change the language around rape. We can make campuses safer for our teammates, our friends, and our classmates. We cannot be bystanders. Taking action isn't always easy, but it's on, on us, us to intervene. Because we can. Learn more and take the pledge at itsonus.org. If you're not in control, then who is? Live above the influence. Welcome back to the Coach Shinnick Show. This weekend, the Argo volleyball team held their annual Packet Pink match, hosting West Alabama. The Argos were coming off a sweep over Mississippi College on Friday night and dropped the first set Saturday before rallying to win the last three. Rachel Neblett led the way with 14 kills. Jordan Poppin was close behind with 13. Monique St. Cyr reestablished a new career high with 20 digs. It was a great day all around with the event raising nearly $5,000 for the Pensacola Breast Cancer Association, something the team takes great pride in. There's a lot that we're playing for. Like, there's more than just volleyball. There's other people in the community that, like, they look up to us, and I think we just need to keep setting good examples. I'm super proud of how much money we raised today. You know, that's really the backdrop of what we're doing, obviously. What we did behind the scenes through everybody's help with the silent auction and the donations at the door, it was, it was pretty incredible. It was a great day. In the pool, the Argo swimming and diving team had 15 top three finishes against Tulane. Freshman diver Samantha Cochran had perhaps the biggest day. 
San Diego native set the school's freshman record in the three meter with a 269.55. Other notables were senior Madeline Pitt and sophomore Tabby Reed Caton. Both picked up wins Saturday. Pitt claimed the 1,000 free by almost seven seconds. Reed Caton in the 50 free. Head coach Andrew Hancock is happy to see his team's progress. Yeah, a lot of positives to take out of the weekend. We're, we're really excited about um, the way our team's coming together. Um, it was almost like a tale of, of two meets. Um, you know, Friday we, we put people in, in position, particularly our new people, to you know, really lead the way and, and take charge, and, and they did that. Cross Country had their conference championships over the weekend in Danville, Alabama. The women notched their fifth top ten finish of the season, placing eighth. Junior Renee Cox paced the team with an 11th place finish, posting a time of 18.41.36, earning her second team all GSC honors. The men placed seventh with four runners inside the top 50. Will Kimmler was the team leader with a 16th overall finish. His time of 25.32.89 got him second team all conference, the second time he's picked up the award. The regional meet is next up for both teams in a couple of weeks. Caleb Carmichael gives us his reaction to the proceedings. Our conference is much improved, and it showcases that today when you can run under an average of 20 minutes and still only place eighth place in the conference. We look strong, which bodes well for the 10K. Um, but as far as the day goes, I was, I was happy with the guys today. I think we definitely still need to work on some things, but uh, definitely a much better race than the rest of the season we've already had. Last fall, Caitlin Burkhart got the chance to take over the reins in goal for the Argo women's soccer team. She handled it well, earning All-American honors. Now in her senior season, the Pace native has the Argos ready to make another deep postseason run. She's brought in a, a great leadership quality this year. Others have stepped aside and graduated, and she knew she needed to step up. I was starting as a freshman, you're shy and you don't want to, you know, speak out to the team and you don't think you really have an important role, but... I mean, you kind of do, even as a freshman, and now that I'm a senior, it's, you know, I can see myself being, you know, more confident and saying stuff to the team and um, just being more comfortable. She has brought the calmness and the consistency off the field, uh, but on the field as well. We know we can count on her. We know we can rely on her. An illness sidelined Burkhart for a few games earlier this season. It was tough on both her and the team. It's not fun sitting out and watching your team having to take some wins and take some losses, but... I think we're in a good place right now. Since she's recovered from her little illness, that we've been able to go on a little bit of a roll. I think it, it, it's a straight comparison to have her in goal, and, and winning a few games has been, the, the I think, the key over the last week or two. With the most important part of the season ahead, there's still more to add to an impressive yet unfinished legacy. We're a very attack-minded team, and uh, we have to be able to go forward and not worry about, okay, if we make a mistake, we're going to just give up a soft goal. I grew up watching UWF play because I'm local, so... That's been really nice, and it's kind of crazy to think Saturday is going to be our senior day, and then it'll be one of our last home games. Her legacy will be that, that continuing of fantastic goalkeepers, all-American goalkeepers. Uh, I've joked before this has been Goalkeeper University, Goalkeeper U, but uh, by her getting all-American last year and the numbers that she's put up when she's been healthy uh, have been fantastic. When I'm older, I'm not going to say, hey, I was an all-American. I'm going to say, hey, I got to play four years at college soccer with you know great people at a great location. <laughs> Senior Day is coming up Saturday against Auburn Montgomery before they start the conference tournament next weekend at home. After just one catch two weeks ago, Antoine Griffin matched his career high with eight catches for 99 yards. He's here now to talk about that and how the season's gone so far. Welcome, sir. How are you doing, man? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing very good. Thanks for being on with us today. It's a pleasure. I, obviously a fun week for you personally last week, but as a group, collectively, as receivers, nice to have that big week after, you could say, maybe struggling a little bit the week before. Yes, yeah, I mean, it's good to get that win, get everybody's confidence back up, um, get everybody rolling. We know we have a big next three weeks ahead of us, controlling our own destiny. So, I mean, it's, we're in a good position. And we're blessed to be here. Uh, we just got to finish it out strong. Talk about how you prepare for a stretch like this. You know it's going to be tough. You, you, you know where you guys were a year ago. Right. And, and I feel like you guys feel a lot different coming into this stretch of the season than you did a year ago. Well, we know we have to take care of our bodies. That's the biggest thing, um, especially being this deep into the season with no bye weeks. So um, taking care of our bodies is by far one of the biggest things that we have to um, stay ahead of, as well as um, being locked in on our opponent and knowing who we're facing. Obviously, those teams last year, they beat us pretty bad. 
Um, we all want revenge, obviously, um, and we just got to make sure we stay on top of everything that we need to do. Does that make you kind of hungry this year to yeah, prove absolutely. that, hey, we're a better team than what you guys saw last year? Absolutely. I mean, coming off those three losses last year, you, you hate it, and you know you have to wait uh, another 365 days to get back to this point. So to be here now and to be the position we're in, I mean, it's a great feeling, and we're, we're hungry. So Talk about, from your perspective, how much better you feel at this point at at this point of the season this year than a year ago? I mean, we're feeling good. Um, I'm feeling good. I think all of the positions on the team are feeling good. We all are close with each other. You know, we're happy that we're in this position. We're happy that it all depends on what we do as a team. And we understand that one of us could, you know, maybe cost us what we want in the future. So we all have to remain on the same page and just concentrate on the mission at hand. It have you guys done things differently to keep your uh, to keep yourselves in a, in a better position and, and fit a little bit better at this point of the year than a year ago? Yeah, our coaches did a great job of adjusting the way we do things from last year. Um, they understood last year we were kind of burnt out at this point in the season, but I would say um, they did a tremendous job in, in the beginning of fall, just prepping us for this moment as we speak. So we're just excited to be here. We know that we're capable. Um, we just have to continue to finish. As receivers, you guys have really taken a big step since that Missouri S&T game this year with Mike Beaudry right. at quarterback. It, it just seems like you guys are more in sync now. How, how has that relationship grown? I mean, this came far, like very far. Um, we had no idea who the starter was going to be coming into fall. But all the reps that we continue to get in practice, uh, we just prepare for whoever is going to be. Um, we're confident in all of our quarterbacks in every position. We know the depth we have. So anybody that steps into place to take on the task, we're confident with. Um, we know we can make something happen. Antoine, thanks so much. Certainly enjoyed it, and uh, good luck this weekend. Thank you. All right, that is Antoine Griffin joining us. The Argos certainly have a tough road ahead, and it starts this weekend in Livingston, Alabama, against West Al. We talk about it as we welcome back head coach Pete Shinnick next. This is the Coach Shinnick Show on the UWF Sports Network. We are not here to drift. We were born to move, to change, to jump in, dive deep, make waves, break through. We were born to splash. The University of West Florida is America's best university for making a splash. The University of West Florida. How will you make a splash? Probably sober. Yeah. But you're thinking about taking the back roads home just in case. If you're probably sober, then why would you do that? Good choice. Probably okay isn't okay. If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. That's a full glass of wine. I'll be chatting you later. Welcome back to the Coach Shinnick Show. Before we talk about West Alabama, there's another weekly award to hand out. For the second straight week, quarterback Mike Beaudry is the GSC Freshman of the Week. He went 25 for 33 through the air for 322 yards and four touchdowns. To earn the award, he also rushed 14 times and uh, was very successful on the ground. I mean, we talked about it earlier, but but his legs really got it done for him this week. No, he really did, and you know, did a great job stepping up in the pocket when things weren't there. And part of uh, you know his success was being able to extend plays. We saw that with his pass to Antoine, but then he scrambled. I mean, really four or five times, eight plus yards, putting us in a great position. Yeah, well, worked out well. Let's talk about West Alabama now. This is one of the top teams in the GSC in the standings. 
they're number one. Do you use that as motivation this week as you get your team ready, or do you try to treat it as best you can like another game on the schedule? Uh, really, uh, kind of both. I mean, we, we say that West Al is probably the most complete team that we've played. I mean, they punt the ball well. They kick the ball well. They play good defense. They play good offense. And I think they're the number one offense in the league as far as yards and points, that type of thing. Uh, really, what we stressed to our guys was uh, this is – you know, this is what you want. This is the type of football game that you want to be in. Uh, number one, uh, uh, a win by us Saturday uh, ties us for first in the conference. And really, there isn't a whole lot that we need to say after that. And we haven't. It's, right. You know, go out, play your best, and let's see what happens. Is there a delicate balance between getting motivated for a game like this and getting caught up in the hype of a game like this, or, or do you think it's it's even possible to get caught up too much in a, in a big game? Uh, you know, we're 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 saying let's ride the energy, let's ride the excitement. You guys all came here to uh, you know take the University of West Florida football program and you know make it one of the best in the country, and this is part of that process and part of that stepping stone that we need to be able to move up on. I'm going to say something that might make you cringe a little bit, but the, the end result is what I want to get to it. Year two now, is this the best that this team has played in the two years? Oh, most definitely. Yeah, I, I think we're the most complete team that we have been. Now, we've had some great offensive uh, productions in the past. We've had some great defensive uh, games and that type of thing. But as a football team, we're as good as we've ever been across the board from kicker, punter, quarterback, linebacker, D-line, O-line. Uh, this is the best group that we've had. And I feel like, I mean, one of the exciting exciting things, uh, I feel like we're getting stronger. Uh, I feel like our guys uh, are moving in the right direction and able to get done what we need to get done. And I say that because I know you hate looking at it as a year two situation, but it, at the end of the day, it, it, it still is what it is. But seeing it grow has been fun. Now we've seen the defense really take big strides this year. We haven't talked a ton about the defense. What's the big difference between last year to this year with that unit? Well, number one, takeaways, I think. We're, we're, we're getting timely takeaways, and you, you saw Marvin, uh, you know, two weeks ago against uh, Mississippi College, you know, late in the game. You saw him early. Uh, we've had some really big interceptions and timely interceptions. Uh, number two, we're a much better tackling team defensively than we were a year ago. That comes with age. That comes with a lot of time being spent on it. We're stronger and more physical. That's what's leading to, I think, the type of success that we're having. Still plenty more to get to with Coach Shinnick, and he gets to your questions. When we come back, we'll wrap up the Coach Shinnick Show. When we return, this is the UWF Sports Network. The world is our ocean, and we are here to make a splash, to dive deep, to create, to develop to break through. At the University of West Florida, there's no limit to how you can make a splash. Don't just sit on shore, jump in. The University of West Florida. How will you make a splash? This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help, and slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Welcome back into the Coach Shinnick Show. Now is the opportunity where you get to ask the questions, but before we get into those, let's check in on the health of the team. How would you get out of shorter? Everybody healthy? Everything good? For the most part, I think we are pretty good. You know, waiting to see on Josh Marshall exactly what's going to transpire with him. Uh, but, you know, we, we've been very fortunate uh, throughout the course of this season. We've had some guys nicked up. We've had some guys banged up a little bit. But, um, again, you know, I, I said this after Delta State and, you know, still feel uh, very good about what our team looks like and, you know, how well they're responding week in and week out compared to a year ago. All right. Let's get right to the question. Don't forget, you can go to GoArgos.com to get your questions in and just click Ask the Coach. Our first question comes from Mark in Michigan, big Toronto Argonauts fan. Uh, now he's becoming a West Florida Argonauts fan. <laughs> he, he wants to know about the speed of, uh, uh, of this team. There's a lot of athleticism at wide receivers, so heading into this game this weekend against West Al, are there any matchups in particular that you're excited about? Well, I, I, like, our, I like our wide receivers versus their DBs, um, but I've liked our wide receivers against everybody's 
these DBs. I mean, throughout <laughs> the course of the year, I think Mike's starting to see it better and starting to get a better feel for that. Uh, we do have some speed on the outside. We do have some speed on the inside. So really across the board, we said 11 guys caught the ball uh, last week. I know that was a couple of running backs in there. But uh, every wide receiver we put out there, I mean, I, I like what they bring to it. Uh, we got a great rotation. We keep them fresh, and we're going to try to use those matchups as best we can. Okay, very good. Uh, Roy in Pensacola, big Leroy Wilson fan. With the success that he's had to this point, do you think we'll start to see him featured a little bit more? We're going to continue to use Leroy. You know, um, he's uh, done really a, a really good job coming in. Uh, we kind of used him as our changeup guy, and then we were resting Chris this last week, so uh, gave him the opportunity to start. Uh, I think we're we're starting to see what he's capable of doing uh, and you know excited about his role and what he brings to the table how do you establish roles in, in a position like that you're always looking, number one, I mean, the guy's got to be able to do all three, uh, and that's what kind of put, uh, you know, Chris at the top. Got to be able to block, got to be able to catch, got to be able to run. Uh, and Leroy's starting to get, you know, good at all of those and seeing some of the things that we need him to see. Uh, and, again, I, like I said earlier with Anthony Johnson, uh, we feel like we got three capable guys that uh, can get it done for us. Trey, in Panama City, with this being the most difficult part of the schedule, how do you keep the guys fresh and and – you know, what figures to be probably the most, the, the three most physical games of the season? Well, number one, it starts in the offseason, and, you know, it's one of the things I talked to our team about uh, yesterday. I mean, I'm excited about the way we look right now compared to the way we looked a year ago. Uh, number two, it's, you know, it's being smart, how physical you are on uh, during the week, and then trying to rotate guys and get more guys playing time. We've played more people this year uh, because we have more depth. Uh, that helps. And then, you know, we do things differently probably than a lot of people, but as the year goes on, we, we start taking out, you know, five minutes here of practice, six minutes it's here on these days to make practice shorter just to get guys off their legs uh, and our strength staff does a fantastic job lifting during the season uh, and then we do some recovery stuff as well on Fridays and Saturdays uh, stretching and different type of exercises to get our guys so that when they go out Saturday they're as fresh as they can be all right sounds great some good questions once again and if you've got questions don't forget go to goargos.com check out the football page and just click ask the coach well, that does it for this week's show. Don't forget men's and women's soccer both at home this weekend. Volleyball is now ranked number 22 nationally there on the road. But fear not, you can stay up to date with all things Argos at GoArgos.com. You can catch the football game Saturday from Livingston on Choice 106.9 FM WRNE 980 AM, beginning with the 3.30 pregame show. Kickoff is four. For head coach Pete Shinnick and our entire crew, I'm Tommy Thrall. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week. This is the Coach Shinnick Show on the UWF Sports Network.